You are getting ready to listen to the voice of Dr. Radi Ferguson, 2004 Olympian, four-time national judo champion, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, author, speaker, and coach. What's going on? This is Dr. Radi Ferguson, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Radi. I get a lot of questions all the time about how did you pursue your PhD while you were training for the Olympics? How did you write all these books? How did you create all these DVD programs and video programs? And how do you keep up this insane schedule while, you know, still rearing two kids? Um, For those of you all who have heard of my story, you know, I was married for 17 years, went through a divorce. People wanted to know how I held out a relationship and did those things. People want to know how I'm able to bounce back from my divorce and keep the, the production and the output going. And I'll be quite honest with you. They're the same things that I learned when I was competing. There are certain staples that are necessary for production, for growth, for forward movement. And even my even even I forget some of these things and I have to constantly do a a check-in with myself to make sure that I'm hitting on these points because Man, I'm, I'm human. I make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. There's certain things that I do that they just become so rhythmic and rote that I believe that I'm doing them and I'm not, I'm not doing them correctly. Or well, I'm not doing them at all. You know, it's kind of like the, um, the person who's been working on an assembly line for years and doing the same thing over and over again and then they just make a mistake and then they cut off their finger, cut off their thumb. I mean, they've been doing the job for years they know how to do the job but sometimes the the mindless iterative process of just doing that job causes you to overlook some things sometimes get lazy sometimes not pay attention to detail and then mistakes or accidents in your life happen so the lessons that I learned from the training process to become world-class, to go to the Olympics, are the same things that I put in place right now to create a a world-class life. Do I lose? Yes, I lose just like I lost matches. Um, Do I I get down? Yes, I get down just like I got down when I was competing. It's the same thing. For me, the game now is life, and life is sport, and sport is life. I always have to maintain and don a certain attitude in order to be successful. So these are the things that that I learned from the Olympic training process, from the sporting process that I apply to my life that you can apply to. The number one thing is practice. You have to put some deliberate practice in place. If you want to become a good writer, you have to write. I heard I I have people say, well, I want to write a play. And you got to wake up in the morning. You got to start writing. You got to start going to plays. You got to start looking at how plays are developed, character crafting. You got to do the deliberate practice. If you want to be a Division One athlete, then you have to start waking up in the morning. You have to start practicing. You have to start working on your craft every day, over and over again. You have to watch videos. You have to do seminars. You have to, and you have to do the practice. If you want to play the piano every day, you got to practice. You have to do your exercise. You have to do your hand stretches and your finger stretches, and, and work on the mobility of your wrists. And these things are important. A lot of people want to be good at a thing but they don't want to do the practice it's daily practice I can tell you right now in my life I've gone I've gotten to a point in my martial arts career where I don't do the warm-up anymore I was in the point where I didn't do the warm-up anymore and right now I'm in practice forcing myself to do the warm-up I even go to practice by myself and force myself to do the whole warm-up and anybody who's done Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Judo knows that the warm-up part of practice absolutely 100% sucks. When you get to the purple belt or brown belt stage, or even the black belt stage, man, you start missing the warm-ups almost collectively. All the brown belts and purple belts miss the warm-up, come a little bit late so that you guys can just slap five and start rolling and just start sparring because the warm-up is miserable. But now here I am as a sixth degree black belt in judo, the red and white belt, and a fourth degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I am in the warm-up every day now. I don't even like to do the warm-up. It is a miserable 25 to 35 minute process, but it's something that I must do because foundationally, 
that is how I got good. And foundationally, that is what's necessary in order to continue to be good. You have to force yourself to do the practice of being disciplined. And that will carry over in the other areas of my life. I'm writing a, I'm writing a book right now. I'm writing a book on how to get yourself unstuck after divorce. Man, I can tell you right now, waking up in the morning and you know knocking the cold out of your eyes and washing your face and brushing your teeth and then sitting down at a computer and pecking away is not fun. Not at all. Do I like writing? Yes, I like writing. Do I like writing all the time? No, I don't like writing all the time. But here's what I know from finishing the dissertation. Reading is not writing. Researching is not writing. Studying is not writing. Thinking about writing is not writing. Writing is writing. And if you're going to finish a dissertation or a paper or research or anything, you're going to have to sit your behind down and write. So you got to get up in the morning and you got to get at that computer and you got to write. I don't care if you don't have anything to write. Just sit down and start writing out. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. As I was on the boat and I was rowing down the stream, I felt myself and then just begin to write. Why? Because when you're writing, it's just like when you're exercising. You have to do some warm up first. Sometimes you have to do a warm up writing exercise and then jump into writing. It's very difficult to just write cold. Sometimes I gotta, you know, write an email or write a, a long post to my friend on Facebook. But I, I use some of that as a as a as a warm up because you got to warm up and then you gotta practice. The next thing you have to do is the, the number two thing is don't forget to set goals. Long range, medium range, short range goals. When I was competing, I always had a goal to, you know, execute some some moves or sequences at the lower level. At the medium range level, I wanted to win the national championships. You know, every year I wanted to win the national championships. Some years I was successful, some years I wasn't to win the national championships. And then the long range goal for me, because I I came back to the sport after college, but I wanted to go to the Olympics. Now when I am when I'm thinking about it, I should have made a goal to become an Olympic champion. But I wasn't even able to access that in my head at the time. I was like, man, I'm going to make an Olympic team. And I ended up making an Olympic team. I, I had some great matches. I did well. I just set my goals too low. I achieved everything I set out to do. I should have made my goals a little bit higher. That is something that I don't regret that. That's why I was in my in my life. That's why I was at the time. I kind of wish I had another four years to to compete, but I didn't. Finance, finances and circumstances and things of that particular nature, they were not set up for me to go another four years. And training for the Olympics is expensive, and a lot of people around you make sacrifices. For you, it's not really a sacrifice because it's what you want to do. But a lot of people make sacrifices around you. And you have to appreciate those sacrifices that they're making and then you know, kind of turn your life around and start working on some other things. Now, talking about turning your life around and working on some other things, the third thing I want to talk about, which will help me get to the Olympic Games, man, is therapy. So a lot of people forget, especially athletes, a lot of athletes get stuck, especially professional athletes or elite athletes, they get stuck. Not understanding that we got to where we were at an elite level because of the practice, because of the goal setting, and because of sports psychologists. Like we sat down, I mean I know I did, almost two times a month with my sports psychologist to go over my goals. To make sure that I was hitting on everything I was supposed to hit on. To make sure I was doing my, my, my mental reps and my physical reps and my emotional reps. Like I was going to therapy. You don't really call it therapy. But it's therapy because every event brings about some type of physical and emotional trauma. That's just what sport does. If you've ever played football, if you've ever wrestled, or you've ever done the MMA, mixed martial arts, if you've ever done it, man, that, that there's some trauma that goes on there. 
And drop all trauma is not bad. I mean, that's when you lift weights, your body is traumatized, but it needs that in order to grow. But you experience this trauma. You you have these mental hurdles that you have to jump over. And every time you jump and then you land, there's some trauma. So there's mental trauma, there's emotional trauma, there's physical trauma. And you have to sit down and work out those things with your sports psychologist. The thing about it is, is that a lot of elite athletes like myself, we forget that the game was either being a triathlete or being a judo player or being a, a, a sprinter or being an archer or being a, a cyclist or whatever the game was or being a swimmer. Whatever that game was, you had a sports psychologist for that game. And now the new game is life and you need a sport psychologist for that game. And a lot of us forgot that. I know I forgot and I had to revisit the things that allowed me to be world class so that I continue to be I can continue to be world class in this game of life. So the first thing we have practice, which is an everyday thing. The second thing is goal setting. The third thing is, is therapy. And the fourth thing is you need some mentoring, man. I was mentored by some great individuals when I was competing. I had Jimmy Pedro, I had Eddie Liddy, I had Angelo Ruiz, um, all these people, Olympians, I had Leo White. I had a lot of, I had Chester Evans, um, a lot of people who were mentors, Sergeant uh, Major Mayfield, Humberto Lopez, like there were some people who really mentored me along the way to help me, to push me along, to provide me with some, some man, sometimes some gentle nudges and sometimes some hard pushes to keep me in the right direction. And even on the strength and conditioning side, man, I had a strength and conditioning coach by the name of Juan Carlos Santana. Man, he not only coached me, but also mentored me. A quality mentor. You need mentoring, which is different than than, than coaching. It's just different. And the fifth thing is you definitely need coaching. Now, here's the thing. Please do not walk around here thinking that you only need one coach. I, this this is the most ridiculous thing. I hear people say this all the time in judo. So-and-so is my coach. Yeah, so-and-so is one of your coaches. One of them. My head judo coach when I was training was Eddie Liddy, 1984 Olympic bronze medalist. My technical Itachi Waza coach was Angelo Ruiz, three-time Olympian from Puerto Rico. My Newaza coach, my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu coach, when I was competing, was Lloyd Irvin. He handled all my groundwork stuff, all of it. My strength and conditioning coach was Juan Carlos Santana. Those were my coaches. I had a lot of coaches. I, I, I checked in every week with my coaches. I didn't just have one coach. This is, that is the most ridiculous thing. That I don't think anybody can get away with one coach. If you, For those of you all who, who follow me or follow the sport of judo, man, Kayla Harrison, two-time Olympic gold medalist, she didn't have one coach. She has a main coach. It's Jimmy Pedro, who's her, her, who's her main coach. And then she has... Um, Jim Pedro Sr., who, who they call Big Jim, who is her like her technical coach. All right, and then she has a strength and conditioning coach. And she has a, she has a lot of different coaches, and then she has some mentors that help helped her with the on the on the groundwork side. Like there's a, there's a lot of coaches that you have in place. A lot of coaches. I mean, you got look at a guy by the name of Travis Stevens, who's a Olympic silver medalist, and. Jimmy Pedro was his coach. Big Jim also his coach. John Danaher, his coach. Henzo Gracie, his coach. But he has a lot of coaches. And he has strength and conditioning coaches. You need more than one coach. You need a main head coach, but you need more than one coach. A lot of people sit around with this, on, on this one coach thing. Man, I, I play college football. Do you know how many coaches on the coaching staff? You have a head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, Special teams coach, running backs coach, linebackers coach, tight end coach, secondary coach. I mean, then you have a a 
someone who comes out and coaches the punters, somebody who coaches the the just just the kickers. Not not the not the the punters and kickers then get separated. The guy who kicks off the tee and kicks the field goals are different than the punter. They have different coaches. There's so many coaches on that field at one time. It is unbelievable. It's a lot of coaches. You need a lot of coaches. And sometimes the coach that doesn't deal with you will give you some coaching in another area. Like sometimes the defensive coordinator will come up to you and say, hey, we were able to watch you on film the other day. I think if you string this out one or two steps and then hit, hit the crease here, you can gain a couple more yards. That's just what I saw. I'm not trying to overstep, but I want to let you know what I saw. Because if you have some more eyes on your situation, especially if everybody is is focused in a synergistic fashion on helping you move forward, then you're going to be better off. So just to give you the, uh, a quick recap, I know I know today's coffee with Roddy is not as entertaining as some of my other coffee with Roddy's as, you know, I sometimes tell some stories, etc. But today I really wanted to to answer some questions that I that I received and, and give you guys some some good quality chunky information that, that's going to help you in life because these are the keys that world class athletes use in order to get better. I mean, we practice, we set goals, we go to therapy, we get mentoring, and we get coaching. We practice, we set goals, we go to therapy, not just physical therapy. We do physical therapy. And then we do sports psych. We do mental therapy too. Because you have to have the therapy to deal with all the trauma, the physical trauma and the emotional trauma that happens with competition. You can't just bottle that stuff up and keep moving, which happens to a lot of athletes and they find themselves in some very bad situations when they get older. You can't, you can't play in the NFL for 10 seasons and go through all those wins and losses and only deal with the the, the massages and the ice baths and the and the surgeries and the rehab, man, you got to deal with the emotional trauma too. T- take care of yourself. And then you need some mentoring. And then you need some coaching. Hey, this is Dr. Ferguson. Have a super fantastic day. I am just like you. I am looking at doing better in life. I want to win the game of life. There's a prize that I want at the end that may be different than the prize that you want on the end. Uh, at the end, but we're all trying to win. At the end of the day, I can tell you, I want to leave away from here. And I want to have God tell me, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's my deal. Yours might be different. Whatever it is, just make sure that you win. And your winning does not have to cause anybody else to lose. This is Dr. Ferguson. Have a super fantastic day. I love you. But God loves you best. Take care and please visit www.coffeewithrawd.com and pick up my book, Coffee with Raw D, today. If you'd like some coaching, if you'd like some mentoring, if you'd like to get on a coaching call, please just send me an email. You can email me at my name, Raw D, at rawd.com. That's R H A D I at R H A D I.com. And put in the subject, coaching or mentoring and I'll be happy to set you up on a coaching call 100% free and we'll see how we can help you take care bye